May the force be with you. Ladies and gentlemen, Carrie Fisher. is coming out on stage. It's bookended by explanations and, you know, uh, denials. <laughs> so that's, that's what I've done. Very cool. And uh, also, i got to say, too, we talked a little bit about some of the stuff last weekend at the San Francisco Comic Entertainment Expo, but we'll try to get to some new stuff here, too. And I, last week, you told a really hilarious story because we are talking about the, the Han and Leia marriage downfall, and you had a really great explanation as to maybe what went wrong there. I can't remember what I said then, but obviously he did way too much smuggling, and that really cuts into child rearing, as it were. And I did too much, uh, yeah. you know, work as a general, you know, so we neglected that awful son of mine. <laughs> and uh, I spank Adam as often as I can. <laughs> you know, I, basically, I, my, my son is a Hitler. Oh, so, uh, Jesus. And please don't call me Mrs. Hitler. Oh, okay. my God. But, it's, he's a really bad boy. At one point, I, mean, I was standing with Harrison and Adam and myself. There is a milkman in there somewhere. Yes, we, we don't really look alike, so maybe the milkman was Hitler. No, it's his, it's his grandfather. It's his grandfather who's doing it. He's got some really bad DNA. Darth, uh, no asshole. I don't know. <laughs> Now, you've been answering uh, fan questions for, for years now. Now, before we got to see The Force Awakens, we didn't really know what happened after Return of the Jedi. Did you have a, a response that you were giving to people up until we actually found out? Like, did you kind of, you know, fill in those blanks at all? Did I make up stuff about yeah. what was going to happen? Up until The Force Awakens, what did you say when people asked you what happened after Return of the Jedi? Uh, well, I lost the bikini. Uh, that was really sad. And I tried to kill Jamba again. Uh, and I hope that he has a relative so that Daisy can kill him, because I think she'd really enjoy that. There's nothing like killing Jamba, but I promise you. My favorite one is really uh, But yeah, I've made up stories about, well, pretty much, what if everyone in uh, that movie was my brother? And I'm just making out with all these people that I'm related to. Both said, you know, what an awful brother he would make. But uh, I, I do like to make up stuff. I like to imagine. But sometimes I say stuff like, well, yes, in the next film there's going to be a really long funeral for Han. And, and people believe me. So please never believe anything that I ever said. <laughs> I may not even have a book coming out. <laughs> Now, before we get to the audience, uh, last weekend, uh, Gary was wearing a little maple leaf on his wrist. Oh, I know. Gary ate 17 raisins in Saskatoon. 
And so he was at the vet quite a bit, getting rehydrated. As you can see, he's trying to let the uh, marks a lot off of my fingers. But now he's wearing a little Star Wars tie that he got here. And we had a little bandana said that, that says the force is strong with this one. But it starts getting a little embarrassing when I over-merchandise my dog. <laughs> now, you had said he was an honorary Canadian because he had the little, the little oh, Canadian yeah, no. Well, and also he's had about eight hours of Canadian fluids pumped into him. So I think he's honorary. He's just floating down Canadian rivers here with you. He's been trying to get that out of the system for the whole last week. He got a lot of it out of it at the uh, Mutar uh, Conservatory. Oh. Well, to, to make him a little more Canadian, I got you something, Terry. Oh. It's, a, it's a very Canadian maple leaf leash that is and awesome. collar for, for Gary that you can rock the rest of the weekend. <laughs> Three. That's 
and that's really good. And I can't, I usually, there's one time travel one I watch. I, I have, uh, I've watched a little of Doctor Who, but there's another one where they go back in time in Scotland. Outlander, I really like that one. <laughs> and there's some other uh, Swedish ones that I've watched, the, the crime ones from Scandinavia. I like those, but then I have to watch them for, you know, like 12 hours to find out what happens. What is that called again? Binge watching. What is it? Binge watching. Binge watching. It yeah, makes sense that I would binge watch. So I, <laughs> I binge and purge watch. <laughs> you revisit the Star Wars films? Have you ever, you know, sit down oh on God. TV and... Well, because I was finishing my book, I thought, well, maybe I have to, I should watch it to see if it jogs my memory of any stories that I might have forgotten so I can put them in. And so I watched um, the first, I watched uh, the, the first one in Empire, and Gary watched them. <laughs> and there's pictures on my Twitter account of Gary watching Star Wars. And I mean, he's really watching it. There's a picture of him watching Yoda and Darth Vader, who I think he preferred Yoda, thinking he was some, you know, mystical dog. <laughs> what did you think of uh, the movies? Oh, he's See, licking he her face. He liked my performance. <laughs> All right, what is, uh, let's go back to this side. And I'm wondering, what was your reaction to the golden bikini? <laughs> well, what was your reaction? <laughs> the boy's like six. All right, I'll tell you, because I don't want to know. Uh, I thought George was kidding. He asked, actually sent for me to come up to San Francisco, and he showed me this sketch of almost nothing to wear. And I looked at it and looked at him and waited for a position. Um, but uh, he didn't. So then I thought, this was before the time when people used to go to the gym a lot. So I, I bought some leg weights. So that my, because I signed some of the pictures you guys have. I'm very close to naked. So that's, I don't like to be naked a lot. No offense. Oh. So, you know, especially anymore. But even when I should have liked it, I didn't like it that much. But I kind of liked wearing it. I thought I looked pretty cute in it. Woo! <laughs> what? A lot of people do. <laughs> Thank you. I particularly like shooting the Rolling Stone article where they had me with all those preachers and I got to run through the ocean in the outfit. That was the best use of it I ever had. Oh, that and killing John the Hutt. In it. <laughs> it's great to murder big creatures in a metal bikini. Ask around. Thanks a lot, man. All right. There's no following that question. Um, Karen, you've had a very uh, prolific but largely uncredited career as a script doctor, saving Hollywood from itself for years. Are there any particular moments, bits of dialogue, anything that uh, you'd like, you're particularly proud of? I did uh, a line, my first one that I ever did, I did Hook for Spielberg, and there's a line in it where um, he's being introduced, uh, Hook is being, he does not be introduced, and he says, and now a man who, who's so deep, he's nearly unfathomable, and so quick, he's even fast asleep. <laughs> so I like that one. And there's a line at the end of Lethal Weapon 3, which is, you're supposed to get old with someone, not because of them. <laughs> so those are my two favorites. <laughs> Speaking of scripts, when you, when you read the, the script for The Force Awakens, w at what point did you find out about the fate of Han? Or was that, was that on set that day, or did you not have any idea? You know, we weren't allowed to leave the um, office. We had to read the script in the office. We couldn't take it home, ever. 
So if you're ever trying to look at a scene and see where it falls in context to the movie, we would never know. So that was complex, but I did find out, uh, I think right away, uh, and then they took it out of the script so that no one would, because people were selling, you know, pictures from the set and all this stuff. I mean, it was very strict around the set. We all had to sign contracts about this thick, saying that we could go to jail if we divulged anything from the script which I think would be a nice way for me to go to jail. <laughs> I'd like to see my mug shot in like the, the hairstyle that I call the baboon ass. <laughs> I'd like that to be my mug shot when I divulge something. I did divulge something by accident, but I didn't know. I printed a picture of Sir, and on the back it said Space Bear or something. I didn't know that was the secret name of the production company. So that pretty much went viral. And uh, I'm, I'm a little bit of a wild card on that front. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, the biggest thing that shocked me about this script was the Mark thing. And so my whole reaction when I first asked about it was, what did Mark say? So, but he was good at it. Very cool. I like how we did that without giving away spoilers, too, in case anyone hasn't seen it. That was very vague yet informative. We, we, we did that well. No, we did it well. We didn't say what actually happened in case... Has anyone not seen The Force Awakens? I think we're good either way. All right. Somebody had... Well, nothing bad happens in it. <laughs> no, really, it's just a sweet, lonely, and no, nothing really dramatic. Exactly how you think it would go. All right, we're back over here. Hey, my name's Drew. Uh, I just love that you said something about Elm Lander. That show is amazing. And uh, I have a quick two-part question. Well, the first part, not so much, but the second part's really quick. Uh, first part is, the differences in filming between the, with J.J. Uh, Abrams versus Ryan Johnson. I heard in a bunch of interviews with your son that uh, he's, he said it's a bit of a different tone. Like, it's a lot of a, a darker tone. With? In, in the second, or in episode eight, with Ryan Johnson directing. These are pretty, I mean, to me, having done the first three, they're, they're darker than those. Uh, but the thing with uh, Ryan is he's so, so specific about his vision. I mean, he shot a scene once, and he had an extra, one of the rebel, you know, walk, behind the scene that was taking place. And then he reshot it because he wanted the extra to go the other way. And I thought, wow, you know what you want. <laughs> so, I mean, that was pretty incredible. In terms of darkness, of course Adam is gonna say it's dark because Adam is dark. <laughs> I mean, it's not like he has any comedy scenes. Well, there is one funny moment. <laughs> Another question about your work as a script doctor. 
What is the most common mistake you know as the screenwriters keep making? Well, a lot of times, dialogue will sound like dialogue. So you want to change it to, here's the biggest thing that bugs me. When you're talking to someone in a scene and you keep referring to them by name, you know, like, well, Gary, I just wanted to say that I think, Gary, that you are such an adorable... Gary, I find you so adorable. Like, we're going to forget that they remember that they know who they're talking to. So honestly, it's, there's some movies you can watch, and it's hilarious, because they're constantly saying each other's names. And there's sometimes they just sort of blather out, and there's no, um, you know, like, I mean, so I do like to have it sound a little more colloquial. And I don't think love scenes are as good as they could be. <laughs> then more do I Thank you. Thank you. Hi. First off, I saw you years ago in Cal Perry, and I'm really happy you came up to Edmonton now as well. I love Canada. We've been here all week. We were in Saskatoon, and now we've stayed there a couple of days, and we've been here all week. So we've been running around going to all the galleries and doing everything you can do. And I have an assistant that drinks a lot, so she's been hitting a lot of the pubs. <laughs> so if you see her, her name's Corby. She's the one with all the beer. <laughs> with your mental illness um, and, it, and you making a stand for that made it easier for people like me to be a more forward and open and open conversation with other people. Being mentally ill is cool. Totally agree. I mean, it's not easy to do and if you're doing it, you rock. person to be able to come forward and, and start to break that stamina? Well, I've never thought of it as a bad thing. I mean, I was sort of proud of getting, I mean, I went through some awful stuff. I stayed awake once for six days and thought everything on TV was about me, which is very awkward depending on what channel you're watching. <laughs> And then the TV started sending me messages, and, and that stuff's really hard. And if you can do that, you're going to really appreciate when that stuff isn't difficult anymore, when you get through something like that. And you can be proud of yourself for having been able to do that. I grew up, though, in a very public family. Um, not that everyone knew everything about my family. My father was bipolar, but he didn't talk about it. But if you hung out with him for about three minutes, I think you'd know. Uh, he shot speed for 13 years. I think he did talk about that. So I guess I'm like my father. But people did, it came out, I think, when I went into rehab. So I thought, well, I can either let this be out there and be, have it be someone else's version of what's the matter with me or what my challenges are. Or we could do my version. And I prefer mine.
to, you know, I see you do a lot of stuff uh, on, on screen and you, you sit, you're sitting in a closed set and then to, to come to a place like this and see the fans and see the people you touch, what does that it's feel like? It's my favorite part of anything to do with, with my career. I love the fans, I love talking to them, I love finding out about other people. Otherwise you're, you know, alone. You know, I like finding out, I like talk, talking from the best of myself to the best of someone else, and you always get that with the fans. You always do. And so I just get the best of everybody. Thank you so much for sharing all these amazing stories. We have time for a few more questions, so let's keep on going. Uh, hi, Gary. I'm, I'm a huge fan, and unlike most of the people here, I was introduced to you through the Blues Brothers. Uh, so, I know it's been probably a number of years since you actually thought about that movie, but I'm curious. No. I'm curious uh, if there were any stories or moments you loved working with on that particular film. Oh my God, that film was a hedonistic explosion. Uh, John Belushi leading the way with uh, doing. They, Dan Aykroyd's uh, nickname for John was the black hole in space because. If you got food near him, drugs near him, alcohol near him, I think maybe even women, all gone, gone, gone. And now this isn't a good story to tell people, but don't consider me a good role model if you're young. But John, I tried LSD with John Belushi. <laughs> Which, you know, I can recommend now that he's no longer with us. But um, we tried it on the set, and we were shooting some of the scenes with all the policemen in the movie. And I thought they were extras. But they were policemen. So that went well. So does that satisfy that? <laughs> I mean, Mimi played by Meryl Streep is, I wish she'd play me all the time, and I could just relax with Gary. But, um, I, I don't know, she would do a better job of some of the mental illness stuff, I think she'd really rock. But, um, uh, I did have a say in it. I thought originally it would be, Deborah Winter would have been good in it, but no one would be better, no one was better than Meryl in it. And, uh, yeah, I was there all the time. It was so much fun to watch a be done film. My friend was a little nervous to come up here, so her question is, what was your favorite school subject? English. I don't mean English like the English language, literature, <laughs> and so forth. I liked writing from a very early age. You get so bored when I talk about books. <laughs> Gary, jump down. I like that, and I like French. But I didn't go to college, so I didn't get a chance to like philosophy and history, which I think I would have liked as well. Hi, Gary. Um, what's your favorite Star Wars film? Empire. Time for a couple more questions, so we'll go over back over here. So I just wanted to ask you, out of all of the Princess Leia's outfits, which one was your favorite? Well, I mean, since I look good in the metal bikini, you might as well be the metal bikini. <laughs> it wasn't that easy to wear because it was made in a So it didn't adhere to your skin. So there's no way you could like lay down because it would 
everything. <laughs> so, and, and you walked around in that outfit all the time. Thank you. Hi, Gary. I just wanted to say that uh, love Princess Leia. You are my role model as a female character, for sure. And um, I really want to be an actor, so hopefully one day I can act alongside you. And um, I was wondering, do you agree with the majority of the fans that Chewie should have hugged Leia after Force Awakens? Yeah, I do. I do. Thank you so much. Experience exclusive. Oh Princess Leia maybe falls to the air. Do you think Ray would actually be your niece? Would be my niece? Who Mark? Uh, Ray. Behind my back went out and had a space date. <laughs> <laughs> he seems too mystical to, you know, screw around. He's <laughs> <laughs> out there on that rock. Who's he getting to get laid with? <laughs> I'm certainly proud to have her as a relative, but I'm prouder to have her as someone who's following in my tiny little stubby footsteps. <laughs> well, kudos to the next movie. All right, well, you can uh, check out her book, The Princess Diaries, out at the end of November, and maybe you can see her in an upcoming Star Wars film or two. Who knows? Give it up for Carrie Fisher and a 